What is happening, Internet? I am finally making a video for the first time in, what, almost a year? I haven't made any videos in a long time now about anything. About knives, about flashlights, about paracord. I have done next to nothing on this channel for, gosh, the past year or so. Today, though, I thought we would sit down and talk about something I've been working on for the past couple of months now. I was watching some of Urban Prepper's videos about making an EDC type kit entirely out of things that can fit in an Altoid style tin. If you haven't seen any of Urban Prepper's videos on the subject, I highly suggest you go watch them. I'll put a link to his channel and maybe some of his individual videos uh, in the description to this video. Definitely go check those out. I actually took a few tips from some of his videos about uh, what exactly to carry inside this tin. Well, let's get to the contents of this tin right now. And if you've seen Urban Prepper's videos, where he talks about putting these kits together, you probably recognize the Narwhal Co mini pin. It's a little tiny pin, not quite three, maybe three and a quarter inches long. And the refill in that is extended by twisting on the pin like so. And that is just about, whoops, that is just about the only decent quality pin I could get to fit in here. Another pin I considered, and I have it here on the workbench to show you I'm in the shed behind the house. So if you hear traffic uh, noise in the background, I do apologize. Another pin I considered for this kit was this one. This is the Xmark Space Pen from Fisher, which is certainly short enough to fit in there, but the diameter of it is just a little bit too large to fit in here. When you uncap that, it's very much a full-size writing instrument. I wanted the, uh, the reliability of that pressurized Fisher Space Pen refill. I tried hard to make this pen fit and couldn't quite get it to fit, but if you were thinking about putting something like this together, this would be another good pen to consider. Maybe you could make it fit. I haven't been able to do that so far, so... I've been carrying the Narwhalco pen in this like Urban Prepper does in his videos. So, just thought I'd throw that in there. The Fisher Xmark pen is something else to consider for this. Now, I carry my Leatherman Wave multi-tool with me all the time, and I try to keep some extra bits on hand. So I have this tray of Leatherman bits. If you have the Leatherman Bit Kit, you know the uh, trays have these tabs on the end, I assume, so you can pull them out of out of a sheath or a pouch. And to make this fit, I did have to uh, cut off the end of that tab to make it to fit. To make it fit in there, I can't speak today. But that, that modification makes this short enough, just short enough that it can fit under the, uh, the crimp on the edge of the tin. So this edge goes under here, and that more or less locks in place underneath there. And that's held in place very securely. It doesn't rattle around when I'm actually carrying this in my pocket or on my belt. Another thing Urban Prepper mentioned in his video was this belt pouch from Walk by Faith 777. Uh, I'll put a link to that website in the description of this video as well. It's a very nice, well-made leather belt pouch specifically for uh, an Altoid size tin. And you can see the 7.7 seven there on the belt loop. Uh, if you saw that video I made uh, late last year of how to make a paracord multi-tool pouch, uh, you saw how my multi-tool pouch had dual belt loops so you could lock it in place on top of one of the belt loops on your waistline. And we have kind of a similar thing going on here. The belt loop on your pants can go right between these so it doesn't slide around on your belt. I really, really like that about this pouch. A very nice, very well made pouch and this is a lot more comfortable to me anyway than carrying this 
loose in the pocket. And what else do we have here? We have the Leatherman Micra Multi-Tool. I've owned a few different Micras. I think I even have another one in my pocket right now. Yeah, there's my old red one that I've had for years. And then I just carry the plain old stainless version of the Micra in this tin. We have Leatherman's excellent scissors. These have a hard time cutting through some soft things, through some kinds of plastic wrap or paracord, but they'll go through pretty much everything else. They'll go through box ties, zip ties, like they're nothing. I really like these scissors. Tweezers. A little two-dimensional Phillips head screwdriver. Come on, focus. Or don't focus, see if I care. A little tiny knife blade. Flat head screwdriver. And a combina combination. combination fingernail file and fingernail cleaner. That is one of the smallest multi-tools Leatherman makes, and it's actually probably my favorite one from Leatherman, just because it packed so many useful tools into such a small package. And it's really the perfect size for going in this kit. All right, and on the side, I have, whoops, a paper clip. And some Johnson & Johnson band-aids. I was able to make these fit in the edge of the tin underneath the uh, crimp just by folding the edges of the, uh, the paper that they're packed in. And that actually made them the perfect width to fit in there. Underneath that edge, underneath that crimp at the edge of the tin, I should say. And this looks like I'm smuggling some kind of illegal pharmaceutical, but I'm not. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this stuff. This is a painkiller with the same active ingredient as a leave, but it's, it's off-brand. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, it's basically a leave. That's what that is. Keep two of those wrapped up in foil. Thought about getting the mini tins like Urban Prepper used in his videos, but... Uh, I was concerned they would take up too much room, considering all the other stuff I packed in here, so I just went with wrapping these in foil. It's probably not the best way to carry these. Oh well. Alright. We have a lightning adapter for a little power bank that I carry in my pocket with my phone. I do not carry an iPhone, I carry an Android that uses a Type-C cable. Gosh, I hate this neighborhood. My phone uses a Type-C cable to recharge, which is what I use with that, uh, that little power bank I carry in my pocket with my phone. But should anybody I know need to charge an iPhone and they don't have a wall charger with them or a car charger, I could probably help them out with this. A little tiny... 64 gig flash drive from SanDisk. Man, my street's busy today. Sorry about the traffic noise. And you saw that paper clip come out with those band-aids. And I actually have a little piece of magnetic tape on the inside of this back wall of the tin where I keep a couple of paper clips. A small one and a large one. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that ratchet out yet or not. We might have to get to that in a minute. Next I have... Whoops! The peanut lighter. I think Urban Prepper had one of these in one of, uh, one of his kits. He has several different versions of his kit. Um, as shown in several different videos now. I want to say in one of them he had a peanut lighter like this one instead of a mini Bic, but I could be wrong. This is a little tiny stainless steel lighter, 
sealed with an o-ring so it's airtight and the fuel doesn't evaporate out it uses liquid fuel just like a like a zippo it's heavy for how small it is but it fits in the tin perfectly for my purposes and next we have a little backup from my backup flashlight really uh, I'm still carrying the through night TN12 I showed in my uh, paracord belt pouch video love the through night TN12 that's my main light but if for some crazy reason I did manage to uh, use up the battery that big 186050 battery in my TN12 or uh, it just got lost or broken or whatever I would have this for backup this is a mech army X4S keychain flashlight that uses a little tiny 10440 lithium ion battery almost looks like a little tiny capacitor but that is actually a rechargeable battery only 100 milliamp hours so you wouldn't have a super long run time with this but it's better than nothing it's better than just not being able to see in the dark let's put it that way so if I, if I twist the head down a little bit, we have a low mode of, I believe, 15 lumens, if I'm not mistaken. Then if you twist the head a little bit more, it goes up to 130 lumens. So this is actually, actually pretty bright for how small it is. And if I unthread the head all the way on this, you can see it actually recharges with a micro USB cable. Uh, that power bank also has a micro USB adapter included with it which I would use to recharge this if needed if I thought of it I should have brought that power bank out here with me to show you oh well so there's the mech army x4s keychain flashlight it fits end to end perfectly inside the tin with the peanut lighter like so All right, and this little ratchet is basically the same as the uh, Topeak bike ratchet that Urban Prepper showed in his video. In fact, I think it's actually the exact same ratchet, just under a different brand name. This one's called, and I don't know how well this is going to show up, if I can even get this to focus. Yeah, that's not showing up very well, is it? Okay, you can kind of see it there. It is the Power Torque Mini Ratchet that you get at O'Reilly Auto Parts stores. It comes with basically all the same bits as the uh, Topeak kit, uh, but without the big fold-over nylon case. And without the Topeak branding, this actually costs less than half of what the Topeak kit does. You'll pay $30, maybe $35 for the Topeak kit. And this was a whopping $15 bits included at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I only carry two basic bits in here for this. Two long bits for the most possible reach. Just your basic Phillips and flathead bits which obviously you can use in the ratchet end of the tool like so. Whoops! Or in the end we also have a magnetic sort of socket so you can use this like a screwdriver. I really like that. That's probably one of my favorite parts of this whole kit. It seems gimmicky, but it's actually really well made. It's made in Taiwan. And for what it is, it actually seems really solidly built. I actually really like this little ratchet a lot. And then we have the Maritac Mini Pry Bar. And where did I get this? I think I bought this from an eBay seller. Obviously, I'm not going to take apart a huge wooden crate with this. I'm not going to pry open a car door. I would imagine this would be very, very good for popping the lids off of paint cans or just any container with a stuck lid. I would imagine this would be a really good thing to have. Made in USA, US government. What in the world the US government would be using these for is beyond me. But that's really solidly made, or it at least seems to be. It's very, very hard steel, it seems like. 
So there's the Meritac Mini Pry Bar. And then over here you can see we have more medicinal looking stuff wrapped up in foil. I have three aspirin in here. And again, just wrapping these up in foil and putting them in a tin in my pocket is probably not the best way to carry these, but oh well, it was the most space efficient. So there's three aspirin in there. Two individually wrapped tums. Again, probably not the best way to carry these. And we have a microfiber cloth that I just kind of stuff into the corner over here. I just fold it up as small as I can and then just cram it in there. This is usually one of the last things to go in the tin when I'm putting everything back in. And then finally, held on at least somewhat by another little piece of magnetic tape in between the uh, pivots for the lid. I have the No Mess Nail Clippers made in the USA. These are not the most space-efficient nail clippers I could have possibly used. Uh, any of the smaller clippers I considered using, I just wasn't happy with the quality of them. Uh, they weren't made well. They didn't cut well. These, I think, are possibly the best nail clippers I've ever used in my life. They cut very, very cleanly. And as the name suggests, no mess. They're, well, not messy. You flip the lever up like this, and this little can flips over. And then they're ready to cut. And then all of the actual clippings are captured inside here in this little, this little box. And when you're finished cutting, you flip the lid up and dump everything out into the trash can or wherever. Great, great set of nail clippers. And that is everything that I carry in this little kit. I'm going to take a minute to get everything arranged here on the workbench where you can see all of it all together. Alright, and here we have the tin and everything I have managed to cram inside of it so far. I don't have the tin perfectly filled up. Next to some of the items in there you can see there's a little bit of space left here and there, little small gaps. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions as to what I should put uh, into those tight spaces. Uh, let me know. I'm always open for suggestions. Now let's see if I can properly put this all back together on camera. I'm already thinking I'm not going to be able to do it, but I'm going to try anyway. Let's see. No mess nail clippers. We have the aspirin and the tums over there. And doing this on camera and getting these to stay in place might be tricky, but I'll try it. There's my two bits for my mini ratchet. My little mini pry bar. Next we have the peanut lighter and the Mech Army X4S flashlight. There we go. All right, and we have the Power Torque Mini Ratchet. Getting that to go in is always a little bit tricky. You have to kind of maneuver it to get it to fit in between the edges of that, uh, that crimp. All right, we have the Johnson & Johnson Band-Aids. We have the Leatherman Micro Multi-Tool. And then I didn't show it very well earlier, the sand disk drive and the lightning adapter just basically fit over each other like this and go over there in the corner by the handle of the ratchet. We have the unpronounceable painkiller and whoops, I forgot to put the paper clips back on that magnetic strip. I can probably just push those behind the band-aids here. There we go. No big deal. And then we have our microfiber cloth, which I'll just bundle up as tightly as I can. 
going to attempt to stuff it down there in that little corner. Well, when nobody's watching, I can make everything fit in here perfectly on the first try. All right, let's try it this way. All right, the next is our Leatherman Bit Kit goes under the edges of the crimp like so and then I'll push towards the back of the container so it stays locked in there kind of sort of maybe hopefully all right gosh I hate this neighborhood can you hear that motorcycle in the distance there's our narwhal co mini pin Oops. and our unpronounceable painkiller and that is the complete kit. Again, big thanks to Urban Prepper for the ideas for really a bunch of the stuff that goes in here. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you hopefully in the next one. Hopefully it won't take that long for me to ever make another one. There's more knives I want to talk about. More flashlights I want to talk about. And so little time to do it all. But... Thought I would finally take the time to show this kit that I put together. Thank you for watching. And as always, peace. See you guys later.